Hello everyone, my name is Antasil and today we'll be playing as Japan. I'll be showing you the uh, best way to attack China. Not an easy thing and no step back these days. Originally this was uh, intended as a video, just like my previous two videos, as a cheesy stra starting strategy how to get big real fast. However, in my practice runs, uh, Japan versus China isn't as easy as it used to be, or at least not as fast. Now, the Chinese-Japanese war is a bit of a special uh, case in uh, Hearts of Iron 4. Japan starts out as fascist, but if you want to declare war on China, you see that you need uh, world tension at 75%. Um, so that's not an option. You can artificially raise world tension, of course, but uh, that would be a bad idea. You can go through the national focus tree and go all the way here to the Marco Polo Bridge incident, which will give you war goals against uh, nationalist China and uh, Shaanxi. But look at all those red numbers, all kinds of debuffs. So they're not making it easy for you. Still, that is the route we are going to take. We will start with Purge the Kadoa faction. Uh, Research-wise, I will start with the basic engineering and uh, industry techs, as well as infantry support equipment. One. Despite going to war as fast as we can, I will build civilian factories at first. I will manage as best as I can with the factories that I have. Do notice that uh, Japan does not have a production queue for trucks and you will be needing a lot of those. So put two on trucks. You can delete the interwar fighters and uh, carry on naval bombers. And I'll put some uh, stuff ready on support equipment and artillery. And close, support, close air support for later. Um, that'll be fine. You can delete the heavy ships from this. I'd like to keep the, the aircraft carriers here, but it's, that's a personal thing. I like, like aircraft carriers. Might as well delete those as well. Now these are all sub 1s. Um, the sub 1936 sub is, does not have any components, so you'll need some naval experience to actually make those um, viable. Instead of the army, uh, take out all the reserve Enemy templates, control. these um, red arrowed ones, and put them in Nagasaki with a fallback line. Take out the motorized and the armor, put them uh, whatever on this port here. And then there's one marine here, and he can go. Now there is 24 armies, uh, 24 divisions left, a complete army, and put them on the border with China here. This will be our main battle army. We can start now and uh, also take care of the air force. Everything that's not on top of an aircraft carrier, put them on one airport and start exercising them. the Navy, I'd like to rearrange that completely. Merge them all with the G button. Split off all of the submarines. Give those submarines to the submarine admiral and exercise those level 3. The other fleet, the big one, and go to Yamamoto, press the distribute button and for later use I will also split off three of these fleets without the aircraft carrier, those consume far too much fuel and train these to level 3. Let's see how our fuel survives at all. We're getting a manpower shortage for our garrisons, so set garrisons to priority Set Chinese garrison to local police force, the rest can stay on civilian. This is also a good time to train 18 new divisions of the trash template. And set those also to priority to actually fill those up. Now what's the strategy here? 
China will um, stack this border with loads and loads of troops. We will be trying to attack them with a huge debuff. That's not a good idea. We need some of those troops to leave there. So I'm going to tra train three smaller armies of low level infantry. The uh, reserve template to naval invade here at Qingdao, here at Fuzhou, and here at Ningbo. Uh, capturing uh, at least six ports in total, and that will force the Chinese to spread out their troops over the coastline and over the northern border. Once that happens, um, and you can get rid of some of the debuffs, you are able to break through here, encircle and destroy enemy divisions, slowly taking care of uh, the entirety of China. Speaking of which, it's also a good idea to use the intelligence agency. And now we go to guide the Zyboxes. In the reserve template here, I'd like to split those up in armies of 15. There will be more divisions coming in, of course, and I'll make three armies of 16 to uh, naval invade China. I'm going to spread them out over different ports for that. These will do, they're nice and close. This army is relatively irrelevant at the time. Let's see how these training exercises are doing. Doesn't really matter what uh, upgrades to take for the spy agency. Uh, do notice that I haven't guarded this Sanxi border yet. I will uh, have special f volunteers for that. I will request the forces of all my puppets. That will amount to 12 divisions, and I will assign them to a separate army with any defensive general that will do, and assign them to this border and exercise. And the rest will also exercise. It's a lot of preparation so far, and we are still needing more. What else is there? No, this seems to be it. We do have 31 naval experience, so we can properly outfit the 1936 up. I'll just use the cheaper components for now and add two queues of infinite submarines. Right. I'm going to skip some of the preparation here. Um, now let's wait for this focus to finish and also get the Chinese spy and get him to build a network here. Get her to build a network here. There are some tempting focuses here uh, that we need to skip for now. Uh, we need to do army expansion law, army expansion and supremacy of will first. We need army expansion law for the army experience to uh, rearrange some templates and supremacy of will gives amazing bonuses that will stay with you throughout the game and we need them early. So let's go there first. Let's assign army generals. Um, it's not a bad idea to use this guy as a field marshal but I'd like to use him as a general first so he can get the organizer trait. Uh, which will then uh, turn into logistics wizard once he can, becomes a field marshal. So for now he's um, a general. Oh, there are some research coming in. Let's continue with the necessary stuff. Now for these generals you can just uh, pick your best picks here. I'd like to always use this guy here. Where is he? He is a commando, excellent for naval invasions where supply is not a guarantee. And the last one can get a brilliant strategist guy. I 
that army is complete as well. Nice even out to the 16 and, uh, in each army. We also have 150 political power and get the silent workhorse. There's a lot of good stuff to be had as uh, in terms of political power, but uh, the silent workhorse is the best way to go at the first. Now these field marshals will be replaced at due time, so for now just get them the other traits, so they do slightly better. set up naval invasions in advance for all of these armies and I'll probably just fast forward me clicking all that later there now I have finished setting up naval invasions for all three armies do note that I'm uh, attacking two ports and a lot of tiles beside them everywhere these uh, two armies, their uh, orders are have no divisions assigned because you can only assign 10 uh, max. But these orders can be prepared and it will save me clicking later on. Also, I now have 46 political power. I'd like to use that to go to the inter-service rivalry. I almost never use this except for this one. Prioritize steel for guns, which adds four military factories for 30 political power. That's a deal you have to take. Uh, the downside is you uh, lose 10% dockyard efficiency or production, but uh, at this stage you really don't need it. Should you later have to go up against the United States, you can always reprioritize uh, uh, the Navy. We already set up those factories, and they are now assigned to one close air support and more to. Uh, I have an extra factory, well, more close air support then. I also see that we're lacking steel. Let's get that from our subject, Manchuko. Also note that Japan does not have Fighter 1 yet researched, or the, the better Fighter 1. Army expansion law has been researched, so now we can edit the template to something more practical. The main template, the Hawaii Sedan, uh, I remove two infantry templates and add one support artillery. And then I go to the uh, reserve template and I add a support artillery. That takes care of our army experience. Now to rearrange the entire army to the main battle template. And as time progresses and we have more military factories later on, the main template will be uh, expanded with an artillery for more attack power. Alright, now let's wait up until we have the appropriate focuses. Like I said, I will be going to Supremacy of Will and then to the Marco Polo Bridge Incident. And we'll also prepare a bunch of reserve templates extra. And I will also announce that when I have the political power, I will get an infantry expert, an army logistics expert, and an army offense expert. All right, at this point, I have two spies now, so I can prepare a collaboration government. Now, strictly speaking, you don't need the um, compliance bonus that it ha gives you. I'm just doing the uh, collaboration government to lower the, resi to the surrender threshold. Otherwise, I have to go all the way over here to surrender mainland China, and that's something I don't want to do. So I'm doing one or maybe even two uh, collaboration governments. Set operations to priority because you're probably lacking support equipment 
Another thing I did was add um, naval reform here to uh, give me more naval experience. But that's just an invent investment for the future. I'm also training 24 extra reserve divisions, but without priority. I'll see when I get the guns for it. And I'm slowly ticking up in close air support, so I'm going to up one of these templates of air groups to 50, to 100, and exercise to level 3 again. Now that I have 10 uh, army experience, I'd like to edit the motorized template, remove two motorized from the template, make it a bit smaller and more manageable. This will also uh, greatly increase our stockpile of trucks, so I'm putting the entire army and the other one as well on one truck supply priority. China is a bit of a problem with supply, and if you look at this area here, you can see that we're in the red here. Um, this railroad here is probably the, to blame, so I'm going to increase that to level four. Same with this one. You can increase the port here, but you can see you're already getting great supply from over here. Probably increase this one as well, just to ma maximize the efficiency there. And go to your production tab and put these guys on top. Okay, I've researched Fighter 1. I need to um, add a production queue for it because the old fighters are um, too poor. I'm going to take some equipment, some factories off of guns. I should still have enough production to uh, finish this in time. Yeah, that, that should work. I will also cancel most of these civilian factories and switch to military factories in all the zones with good infrastructure. Supremacy of Will is done. Now going for Marco Polo Bridge incident. So we should also get ready for the war. Um, these air groups uh, we'll have to go over here. That means I have to upgrade that airport. No, not you. This one. Needs two extra levels and needs to be put at the top. Naval invasions are all ready. Fuel is a bit on the low side. So I'm going to get a few factories worth of fuel from the United States. Because I'm going to set this fleet to naval invasion support. Let's hold the orders for now. But they will provide shore bombardment bonuses to the naval invasions. And that's very necessary. The air fleet can be set to support missions on the northern China part, where my naval invasion will uh, invade. We can add a ground support specialist. It's not good, but it's the best we have. And we can... Mm, tactical bombing. Yeah, that's probably a good one also adds air experience. Please do keep at least 50 political power in storage for one of the first things we have to do once the war kicks off, which it will be any moment now. Supplies. Ooh, I have forgotten to build trains. It's not a big problem, but it could be one in the future. So I'll just put one factory on trains and it'll sort itself out. Marco Polo Bridge incident, get Annex War Goal. 
and now we can go for national mobilization law. Declare war. Let's go. Now. Marco Prolo bridge incident. Attack bonus against country, minus 50%. Defense bonus against country, minus 25%. Um, this will effectively uh, stall you. Let's call in our puppets. And also declare war on Shaanxi here. Why not? Now, here's something very important. Out of my four test runs for this, I've forgotten about this in uh, two of them. Escalate the war in China. Uh, every month you can uh, take this decision and it will uh, mitigate some of the debuffs you have on the Marco Polo Bridge incident. So in this case, here we go. And the Marco Polo Bridge incident is now 40% uh, attack bonus. Uh, minus 40% attack bonus. Uh, it's something, and it will um, stack, so you will have several of those. Now prepare for naval invasion number one. No, 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 not, not this fleet. These guys, yeah. These guys can go to convoy raiding. Or any ships the Chinese might have left. And set this general here, the top one, to invade. Let's see how that goes. Now, you can try to take these tiles surrounding Beijing. Um, unlikely to work. But, hey, who knows? It'll distract the Chinese from the other fronts. All right, so here we go. And the coastline is defended, but we are seeing some green bubbles. There is air support, there is naval invasion support, and we have our first tiles that these guys immediately to support the attack on the port. Here's another one incoming, and these guys are under attack. Wait for them to win? No, oh, that's probably going to take a while. This is not the best time to actually also invade the other two. Um, these attacks are also just distraction. I want them to send all of their troops to the main front line here and to this one, um, so the other coastlines will be less well protected. This is generally the easiest of the naval invasions, and this one almost always works. And here we are. We have a port, which means we can select the six units that are not part of the invasion and send them over. You see, fuel is uh, not going too well. But we'll get there. Hey, you have an amphibious trait already. How good for you. We might even take this port. But it's no big disaster if that doesn't work. Going over here, well, the motorized have arrived. Let's see if they can help. New divisions have arrived. Let's give them an order. And later on, we'll just add the entire army to this order. Keep the date in mind, at the 14th you can take the decision again to escalate the war in China. And you need to do that. Let's see if I can make an encirclement here. That's probably wishing for too much, but hey, I can try. No, I think it's time to uh, let this one uh, sort itself out and go to the next one. Pausing the game to do this all quietly and assign units to these naval invasion orders. I'm selecting units and using control click to 
actually assign the units, all ten of them. I want the Air Force to help me. They have served their purpose there and they will now go over here. Barely in range, but who knows. And the, air f and the fleet is still on naval invasion support, so let's go. This is generally one of the tougher naval invasions. Um, terrain is tough, there's a lot of units here, but we'll see what happens. 14th of August, escalate the war in China. And you see Xiamen is already guarded, Fuzu is guarded, and so are the tiles next to it, but we're seeing green bubbles. So I have some hope. These guys have a clear landing, set them to mm, support attack this one. Um, taking one of these guys off to defend. Put these guys on here, set these guys on there. And this port has a good chance of falling now. Let's have a look at how the other front is going. Uh, could be better. And could also be better, but we'll get there. Almost there, and we have the port. I did manage to leave this tile open. Let's hope that doesn't bite me in the ass. And we have both ports. Good. Delete all orders. One order, so the final six units will also arrive. And let's repeat this great success with the final naval invasion. And there you go, boys. These guys will not have any uh, air support. Um, sorry. I also see that I have more than enough experience to add the professional army corps. And while I'm at it, I will also do bold attack for more attack. We can always use that. This is the toughest of the naval invasions, and hopefully by this time the Chinese will have spread out, so you can actually make it. It's a good idea to split off these units and take this tile here, so you can actually encircle the port. And keep that one in place here. Uh, we're looking good here. Now you can try to expand from here, but this is all mountainous terrain and these divisions are still trash, so you probably shouldn't even bother. Come on guys, I do need to port here. This port is encircled and it's looking good. And we have this one. Let's grab the remaining six units and also ship them over. Oh, wait. We can now also end the naval invasion order here. That's uh, a fuel guzzler, that one. We don't really need it. And once those ships return to port, my fuel ship situation should improve. And the second, the second port here is taken, so we can also make an order here. 
Now let's take st stock of the situation here. Um, I'm outnumbering some of these front lines here. Um, don't bother pushing in there. It's it's really no use with what you have. These invasions here are useful later on, once you can connect with your main armies. Ooh, I see something went wrong here. Oh, that's an encirclement actually, so that's perfectly fine. We can also escalate the war with China again. And we should be doing better and better here. Also going to add an airport here so I can properly support my units up top. And I'm moving the air force back where they belong. All right, now if I put my cards right, I should be able to take these two tiles with air support encircle Beijing and start encircling more and more. I'm also going to see if I can just kill these units. Yes, I can. Should probably turn this into one order now. This is also a good idea to spread out these reserve armies. So they are all nice stacks of 24, that will reinforce these uh, lines, all of them. National mobilization law, and go for the fifth research slot. How are we doing up here? Mm, not so good. The fuel's almost out, I need more. More fuel, always more fuel. And now that I have the experience, I will also edit the tank template. I'm not going in for full tanks, but uh, if you are using some tanks, they should at least be worthy of the name tank. So I'll go for this template. It's 14 width, it's, it's trash, but it'll go with some speed into um, openings, although probably the motorized is better suited for that. Let's pull them out of the battle so they can reinforce properly. And this doesn't seem to work just that well just yet. So let's see if we can do some encirclements around here. This would be a very interesting tile to take. Let's see if I can do that. But more than likely the Chinese will just reinforce. Just um, blast by in Tanjin. Alright, with the Air Force moved in, I can probably make some good moves here. Spin the units in Beijing. Let's see if we can make this work. Beijing surrounded. Very proud. The next tile we should be taking is this one here. It contains a railroad. It can allow us to cut off Tianjin. Tianjin. 
first we need to empty out this one. And Beijing is taken. Now the other front's doing slowly pushing. But at some point we'll connect from the other side. Now is ours. Hmm. These guys don't have any orders left. I'd like to send them over here to help out with defense and attack whenever they're able. Let's send them over there. Once they're there, I'll use the main army, redraw, redraw their front line all the way to the south. They have a job to do at the capital. Now often you'll hear the advice to encircle the capital so every other unit will run out of supply. That hardly ever works. Uh, not anymore at least. You can try. And Probably a waste of time. Also, Nanjing is the big supply hub of the region, so you're only handicapping yourself. Let's add some airport here and move the air fleet that we have over here to over here. We keep our operations nice and supported. At this point, uh, battle lining into China might even work. Let's see, I've even forgotten to escalate the war in China. Probably for an entire month by now. But at some point, um, it does not really matter anymore. I'm going to improve my tanks a bit. I'm currently at 31,000 casualties. China almost up to 300, especially if you count their allies. Our allies are, well, holding the line. How optimistic are you guys? Well, not too much. Noticing I'm running a deficit on equipment now, especially artillery. Probably wouldn't hurt to add some more artillery to the mix. Zero. Uh, it's probably because I'm doing a preparation for my collaboration government. You know, well, that will pay itself off in the long run. Things should be easier once we connect uh, these two front lines because then we have a large line and we can use the motorized to punch holes in there. Speaking of motorized, we have some tanks and some trucks. How many trucks can go into a motorized division? 370. I can use a few more of these and also add more trucks. 
They'll be done when they're done. We're not in a hurry. This should be alright. Well, it's all out of range here, but um, at this phase it doesn't really matter. I'm going to cut down on my fuel consumption a bit. And that could complicate matters. Escalate the war in China. This uh, removed. Oh, yeah. Probably because I took that. Um, Escalated the war with China five times, it bypassed the uh, secure China focus. Agree to American terms, we will never bow down. That seems obvious. I can now also get the military theorist and start getting some doctrines. I will go for superior firepower. And that one will have to wait. That's mm, getting useless. And that's also not working. We we'll probably need more air support in those regions. But first, let's see if we can take out the capital here. Supply in this region is getting very troublesome, I believe. Yes, this is probably not the way to go. No matter. Let's pull back the motorized and armored. And you can see the attrition here. And uh, leave the army here, and we'll try to reinforce from this side. This is um, starting to look very promising indeed. At this point I'd rather not even use this decision. Ah, fuck it. It's good for the video to see, let's show you guys what it does. Um, push decision. Conquer China, 360 days. Um, effects when completed. I lose stability and a lot of war support if I don't make it. If I do make it, I get some stability and some war support. Well, that never hurt anyone. Let's then go for it. Let's hand out some orders. Supply situation everywhere. Well, it's not as horrible as it could be, but I'm still on the relatively good supply lines of the coast.
Now I'm going to move my uh, armored and tank divisions and motorized back up here to the plains where they actually stand a chance of moving. I'll uh, see what these guys can do with their battle plans. I'm not having high hopes. one good peace deal. See that we have uh, taken out Portugal as well. That's because we took their territory Machao. Now you can puppet China. However, puppeting communist China, they have a uh, they also have all the cores and they have a manpower uh, bonus in their uh, national spirits. So this is the best way to go. One communist China puppets. Now, it's nice and all to take some territory for yourself, for all those lovely factories and resources down south. And of course the port that we ha had here and to turn. Communist China can take all the rest. No, they can't pass a few times. Communist China can take all of the rest. All of the rest? No, not all of the rest. There's still Portugal. Let's just puppet those and we're done. October 1938. This wasn't a speed run, but I do dare you to try and beat me on that one. Um, I think I did pretty well for uh, an unscripted attack on China. It's become an hour long, hour and a half long video. I will have edited out some of it, but I will leave most of it in here uh, just to show you uh, the very precise micro that I've been uh, trying my best to do. Um, I'll add ta timestamps for anyone who wants to skip through it um, and get the general idea of it. I think the first 10 to 20 minutes should give you the basic idea of what I was going to do. Concentrate on getting a distractive armies on the, on the coastline and then push inwards with two collaboration governments. Keep an eye on supply and uh, encircle and destroy as many Chinese as you can. As you can. Sorry. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time when I will show you the German Civil War and the liberation of Ukraine. Bye bye.